Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 38. Well, it's finally happened to me. My scanner radio has gone dead, so to speak. Yep, apparently, recently, the local sheriff department has done what they call rebanding. And my older scanner, it's about mm, five years old, now can't follow, can't follow that trunking system anymore, which means I need to get a new radio in order to do that, a, a digital trunking radio. So today I wanted to give you a little information about what rebanding is. So there's a couple of websites that I've found some useful information on that I'd like to go to now. Okay, the first um, website I want to go to is radioreference.com. I've talked about this website a number of times in the past. And uh, when I did a search for rebanding, it was one of the first things that came up. And it has a nice tutorial on rebanding, which is also called reconfiguring. And it refers to changes within the 800 megahertz band that uh, is used, for instance, locally for Pinellas County Sheriff Office for their communications. And what has happened is the Sheriff's Office have switched their frequencies to these new bands to take uh, into account for the fact that they're using digital radios now. And this process of switching is called rebanding. And let's go through some of this uh, information on this website. A lot of details here. I won't go everything. Um, the rebanding started back in the 1980s and 1990s. And it affected the frequencies between 851 and 866 megahertz, which is where the local um, sheriff's office operated at uh, 156 megahertz and several frequencies therein as it was a trunking system. Now, what has happened since they've gone digital, they've, they've moved the bands in which the digital information occurs. And what happens is um, when a signal is received on one of what's called the control channels, there's information on that channel that tells it, tells the radio where to go in frequency to find the actual data transmission. And what's happened is that switch that occurs from what's in the control channel now has changed. So it used to change, it used to go to a certain area in the band and now it goes to a different area. So the older scanners, uh, like my Radio Shack Pro 97, doesn't know this new scheme of jumping and therefore it doesn't track it. Now that doesn't affect everything that's on the Pinellas County band. Um, for instance, the transit, transit uh, information is still on the same frequencies. That's the buses and stuff like that. Some of the utilities is in the same band. And I guess that's where I got kind of fooled because I was still receiving that kind of information and not realizing I was no longer receiving the police communications. So that information is still there and it still works on my old radio, but I'm, of course, more interested in the police stuff. And this website gives you a lot of information of exactly how that mechanism is. And you can go into that detail if you'd like. Now, well, here's the scanners that will stop working. And one of the scanners, or two of the scanners I have, is the BC-780, for instance. I have two of those. And then down here on the handheld, here's my Pro-97. And there's nothing you can do with these particular scanners as far as fixing them. So they're, they're basically dead. 
And in a few minutes, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of where the police frequencies have moved from year to year to year. Let's see what else we have here on this website. Uh, some scanners can be reprogrammed. And so the, they can be updated. The firmware can be updated so that they will work. But there's only a few of them in that case, and I don't have one of those. So I'm in the market for a scanner. And, of course, I generally don't buy scanners brand new. I usually try to get them um, off the used market. So I'm in process of now trying to determine which scanner to go after. There's a lot of scanners out there now that have been upgraded and will follow these new systems. And, unfortunately, I don't know too much about them, so I've got to do some homework there. If you have any information about a scanner that you have that does follow this rebanding and this digital system and you, um, you, know, you really like the radio, please leave me a comment because I'm kind of open to what to get now. Um, the other thing is, like everything else, these newer digital scanners uh, cost a lot more money than um, the old analog trucking radios and therefore oh this is cool no thanks I don't want an update um, so and here's some listed here uh, that do support it um, for instance the uh, GRE 500 and 600 the Radio Shack 106 and 197 there's a couple of those um, I'm kind of interested in there's a new GRE it's a uh, PSR 800. Um, going to be looking at that radio, but that radio sells new for about $500. So I typically don't pay over 200 So anyway, this is the website. Like I say, it's, uh, if you do a search on rebanding, uh, this is one of the first ones that will come up, radioreference.com. So if you're new to rebanding, this is a good website. Now let's go to another website gives you a little history of the police bands. And this, uh, this is, I think I did a search on uh, police frequency history, and I came up with this website. And it gives you a, a quick rundown of where the police bands have been. I can remember many years ago going to my father-in-law's house who had an HF radio and he was in he was out in a boondocks on working on a nuclear power plant I think in North Carolina maybe South Carolina I'm not sure exactly and they were still using it at that time and that was probably in the mid 70s would you believe it um, they were using HF and so he had a shortwave radio that he could lif listen to the uh, police band on shortwave radio. And as you can see here, it started out at 2 megahertz, And then slowly moved to um, 30 to 40 megahertz, which um, I had radios that I listened to uh, the police band on, on those frequencies. And um, the... Um, statewide highway patrol for a long time stayed on those frequencies and uh, when I was traveling across the state I would pick them up uh, in the 30 to 50, 40 megahertz band. Then later on in like the 1946 um, they introduced a couple of channels in the 150 megahertz band which was the business band and they started using 150, like 155 to 156 megahertz. And I switched over and started listening to them there. Then they moved up to 450 megahertz in the 1950s. And uh, worked there for a while. And then, let's see if we go down here a little time. Looks like in the 1970s is when they switch to the 800 to 900 megahertz range. And so they were analog then. So 
the scanners before then only went up to 512 megahertz. So there again, you had to uh, buy another scanner radio that would go up to uh, 900 megahertz and pick up the uh, 150 megahertz band to continue to track the uh, police band. And then now, um, and then they went to trunking system. So they were still up in the 850 megahertz, but they went trunking system was another system. And now they've gone digital, which yet another system. And so once again, my scanner radios, as far as listening to the local police, specifically the sheriff department, has gone dead. And I'm in the process of now trying to find another radio. So that's kind of a quick history of um, rebanding of the police bands. So it's been going on for quite some time. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I welcome any comments. Like I say, I'm in search for a new radio and don't know much about um, these new digital uh, rebanded radios. So drop me a comment or an email. And uh, that's the show for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.